Amen. What a gift. Praise the Lord. That was beautiful, Roger. Thank you, buddy. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask Sister Shelley if she would to stand, ask the Lord to bless the remainder of the service and the word. Uh, Sister Shelley, would you mind? Amen. Amen. Isn't she lovely? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> I believe in the answer to prayer. How about that? Is that good enough? Uh, <laughs> you know, every time that I uh, have the opportunity to speak, uh, I, I want it to be the best time ever. Um, you know, over the years, Sister Shelley will say things like, that was one of my favorites, uh, but it, it um, uh, every once in a while it'll come across, uh, I believe that was the best ever, <laughs> and I don't believe I've preached my best uh, message yet, uh, so uh, I, uh, I still have a voice, I still have a, a will to know what God would have us know, uh, and so I'm still seeking, I'm still learning. I'm still knocking, and I'm still finding. Amen? <laughs> Amen. So praise the Lord. Uh, thanks, thank you all for being here this morning. Um, I, I, I want to really uh, relay something uh, personal uh, to you, uh, and uh, it, in, it includes me, uh, and uh, I just want to relay to you that I think that you, each one of you, are very special. Amen. <laughs> and not special like the world will tell you special. <laughs> right. Now, <laughs> now uh, <laughs> there's a phrase uh, that's uh, uh, probably the most passive aggressive uh, sarcasm that's ever uh, been introduced, and it was introduced, strangely enough, by the church lady on Saturday Night Live. I don't know if you ever, any of you ever watched that show, but uh, they used to uh, have an image of a church lady whose top button was buttoned, and she wore the dress, and she would sit in the stained glass windows and tell everybody what was wrong with their life. And, and one of her taglines, well, isn't that special? I believe it was Dana Carvey. I saw his interview for that show, and it was it was funny. Uh, but um, that sarcasm is not what I mean. Uh, when you talk about the word special, you know, today it's uh, basically uh, it's it's been kind of changed. You know, uh, special needs. You know, that type of thing. But I, I'm talking about the exceptional. I'm talking about better or greater or different than usual right <laughs> amen each one of you I, I i believe it wholeheartedly and there's a reason i believe it is because of i am all right i am I, I, now there are probably no two greater words that have ever been put together than i am <laughs> Right. Um, so uh, I, I say I included myself in this because I am special. <laughs> right. No, there's no facetiousness needed. My mother was the professional at that. She was a good church lady. Uh, 
<laughs> and you know, uh, uh, in the, in the South, uh, there is that type of sarcasm in a lot of things that they say, and you've probably heard it like, well, bless your heart. They don't really mean that. They mean, well, aren't you special? Right? And a lot of people think that they are special in a bad way. Uh, but uh, I want to talk about how that I am has made you special. Right? So I wanted to uh, go back to the very beginning. Uh, and Genesis 1 and verse 26 uh, has some truth that could be uh, unlocked and unfolded, uh, even to the point of the uh, understanding of the threefold nature of God. And when I, I talk about that, what I'm talking about is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If the church could get that understanding correct, what a monumental uh, opportunity that it would be to be like Christ, to be like God, to be godly in this present world. You see, that type of, uh, those phrases are, are, are so far removed from our theology uh, that we don't even think that way. But when we come to the Lord, He transforms the way that we think. And that's what I, I want to do with you this morning is transform the way that you think about yourself. Because when you transform the way that you think about yourself, the way that you think about others will automatically change. It's, and I don't know why this kept coming to me, but I wanted to say to you, it's like the, the difference between a speaker and a talker. Uh, and and, and it, uh, if I could just simply unpack that, uh, I believe we could change the world. Because a lot of people will talk about you, uh, uh, talk about things, talk about problems, talk about this, talk about that. That's a song too, but uh, we won't even go uh, <laughs> talk about your granny down in Alabama. I don't know, you know. Uh, uh, but uh, oh, But there are fewer people who speak to issues. When I speak, I want to speak to issues, right? I would rather have someone speak to my mountains than talk about my mountains, right? And so I believe that God has transformed us from being just talkers about things to being speakers about things. And uh, there's something that uh, just as, as this unfolds in my own mind, uh, I, I tried to relay it a little bit last week, how that uh, Jesus said he only spoke what he heard. So to be a reflection or a, a sounding of the Father's voice, right? And so he only spoke what he heard, right? And then he said of the Spirit, Spirit, he will also speak what he hears. And we're talking about God the Father, in essence, uh, uh, in heaven, relaying the message. And so uh, as we are a part of that nature, uh, we are connected. And I don't know if you've ever had a speaker that has become disconnected, but it's of very little value. Right. Uh, in this particular scripture... Genesis 1, verse 26, just the first half. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Now, uh, if you just took that one verse, you might think that there, uh, there's God. Uh, and, of course, we believe in one God. This is where it gets tricky for the literal interpretive person because it sounds like there are a few gods or at least God and the angels or God and somebody else because he wouldn't say us, right? But when you understand God a little bit better, when it's revealed to you who Jesus is and what the Holy Spirit is intended to do in your life, then you understand when God says us, He's talking about the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Ghost. Right? The threefold nature of God. Now, that's just a little tidbit of information for you, but what I want to focus in on is that you are in this, crea- in this uh, equation. That you were created by God to be like God. Right? And, and I, I want to explain the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost to you just a little bit this morning, if you'll give me a few moments. Uh, I... It, it, it's like God spoke to humanity. And this is what it says. You know, God said, let there be light, and there was light, right? And then from there until the uh, finish of the Old Testament, God was speaking to people, right? right. Don't do it. <laughs> I think that's a good representation of what, you know, don't have any other gods before me. Right? Don't do it. Right? And so this is the way that God the Father, because when we are children, we need a father and a mother, of course, to raise us in the admonition of what we are supposed to be. And you know what? A lot of us have, uh, uh, it's so difficult to preach this because of the imperfection of fathers and mothers in today's society. Somebody help me out here. I don't want to talk bad about your mama, but uh, if I have to, I'm not opposed to it, right? And it's the craziest thing. I've watched it. I've watched this unfold. You know, I've watched the best mothers that I've ever known. I've watched them uh, been demeaned while the worst mothers that I've ever known Say, oh, she was the best mother ever. I'm like, you liar. (laughs) You liar. I know for a fact that she was drunk the majority of her life. You say, well, Brother Scott, can't you be? No. 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 Uh, I'm sorry. Too much truth? Uh, let, me, let me spill it out a little bit further. I'll go a little further. We need a father figure in our life to help us to understand what it means to be us. Amen. Amen. You've heard the terminology, a chip off the old block, right? Right? The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, right? Why? Because the seed. The seed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. We have a friend uh, in our, our motorcycle ministry that uh, uh, he sat over in the parsonage uh, at one of our dinners recently, uh, and he uh, did one of those uh, 23andMe DNA um, a test. He's 70 years old and found out that he was half Italian. Well, his mother... Or his father, neither one, were Italian. And I said, the milkman? And he said, no, the pizza maker. Listen, listen. But the man who stepped up to be his father shaped him into the man that he was. Now, by the time at 70 years old, all of those other people, his mother, his father, and his actual father... Uh, had all passed away. You see what I'm saying? But who made him into who he was was the person that stepped up to be his father, right? And we have a heavenly father who made us in his image. That's why I think you are special. Now, you may have made a mess of it. (laughs) There it is. There it is. And the scripture says so. All we like sheep have gone astray, right? And, and that, that's the truth. I know I made a mess of my life. And I, I think back to my uh, parental couple, you know, my mom and my dad. Uh, I, I think of the way that, you know, it was almost like good cop, bad cop. You know, my mom was uh, more of the on me, on me, on me. And my dad was like, he'll come around, he'll come around, he'll come around, uh, and um, thank God he was right, you know, because um, I, I did come around 
when I was in the pig pen, realizing that the promises of God were not being fulfilled in my life, I realized that I had made a mess of what God had designed. God designed me to be very special. I uh, manipulated, maneuvered, and made myself into something that I was never supposed to be. I was never supposed to be in street fights, bar fights. I was never supposed to be beaten or battered or uh, the beater or the batterer. You see what I'm saying? And so I had uh, taken what God had given me, my strength, my voice, my all, and I had committed it to an image of something that was ungodly. But God did not design me to be ungodly. Now listen, you all said amen at that. But if I say God designed you to be godly, there, the milk turns to meat. Now, you can accept the milk because all of us want his forgiveness. But not all of us want his purposes to unfold in our lives. We all want to be saved, but not a lot of us want to walk sanctified. I'm telling you, as sure as I'm standing here, the gift of sanctification has become more clear to me in the recent months than ever before. And it's because of the scripture who tells me that God has given me everything that I need to succeed. He's designed me to succeed and not fail. If I tell you that God designed you to succeed and not fail, I want to tell you now that you're special just like I am special. You know, a lot of people look at me as a pastor or a pastor's wife as a, a, a leading team, and we say, oh, look at them. Boy, <laughs> that, you know, no peanut gallery uh, there, Chris. I know. <laughs> I know. And that, no, that's, that he's, he said exactly what I was thinking, yeah. you know, and that's why he said it is because it was, it was correct. <laughs> Just not everything that corrects it needs to be said, <laughs> you know. Amen. Oh, isn't that baby special? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, so uh, a lot of people look at a pastor or a teacher and like, uh, uh, and the phrase that you hear most often is, you don't know what I'm going through, or you don't know where I've been, you don't know what I've done, you don't know how, I, and I'm like, no, <laughs> you have no idea. And, and you know, sometimes, uh, uh, idea. Uh, you, <laughs> you have no idea. Uh, I kept some pictures. Some I threw away uh, because uh, it, um, it painted me in such a horrible light. I never wanted to be seen as that again. Um, and uh, as we go through this scripture, you can turn, if you would, to Psalms, the 27th chapter. I'm not going to get there just yet, but I wanted to tell you that you were designed by God and that he designed you to be like him. Uh, unfortunately, we're not content with the content. I don't know when it starts, but it starts very early. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. When we used to have a baby in the neighborhood, one of our families that lived right down the street from my house, they had a little niece or nephew, and uh, uh, they were like, what is that? What is that? That was the phrase. That was the phrase about everything. What is that? 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 And you would get tired because a tree, a car, a mailbox, a bird, a squirrel, you know, you would get tired. But uh, they, they were so inquisitive and what they soaked in and what they learned became who they were. 
If their father was absent, then they had to fend for themselves and then somebody spilled into that child what this was and what that was and what this was and what that was. And if that child never was carried to Sunday school, never was carried to children's church, never was carried to youth group, never was, uh, you know, oh, we're going to let them decide for themselves. Well, you're going to have a mess. And that's what the Bible says. A child left to themselves will bring their mother's shame. Of course, if shame was a word that we even had anymore. Because we've allowed the enemy to control the language. Even in the church. Except for me. And you. Who will hold the truth. Of God's word up. And out for everybody to see, regardless of what it costs you. Uh, designed by God, but we're not con content with the content, right? Uh, and uh, now, listen, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to, uh, uh, some of the things that I'll mention are not that it, it's, it's bad or that it's good necessarily, but, um, uh, and I, I, I I want you to uh, hear me, but to hear me, you've, you've got to experience what I, I'm talking about because if you're not happy with what God designed, um, then you're going to take steps to improve it. I, I, I don't know whether you've ever had... Uh, these feelings, uh, but um, uh, why couldn't I have been born into that family? Right. Now, I don't know whether this is exactly true or not, but there was some kind of rich family show on the TV. I think it was a Chrisley Knows Best or something, uh, except now they're in the penitentiary because th apparently they didn't know best. It looked good, Sean. I mean, come on. I wish I could go out and buy a car like that. I wish I had a house like that. I wish I had that. I wish I wish I wish I had uh, different color eyes. Now, I pick on that one because, you know, I, I, I look at people and I'm like, that's not really your eye color, is it? No. 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 Those aren't really yours, <laughs> are they? I remember, I think it was uh, uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was stuck in the basement with this girl. And, uh, you know, it was like earthquake, jammed the door, or whatever. And she began to take off things that weren't hers. And uh, before you know it, it wasn't her anymore. <laughs> you know, and I'm not just picking on women because guys will do it too. You know what I mean? In one way, shape, or form, you know, just for men. Uh, I don't know, you know, I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm just telling you, we're not content with the content. And then we're not content with the circumstances or the surroundings with which we were placed into. Not one of you chose to be born. Not one of you chose the family that you were born into. And maybe you've never had the thought, uh, I wish I would have been born, born uh, rich <laughs> in a different neighborhood on the right side of the tracks. You know, <laughs> a lot of us identify with the wrong side of the tracks, but who's to say, you know? Uh, and, and so uh, when, when God was sorting all this out and sending the storks on their mission... Uh, <laughs> You, <laughs> maybe, uh, you know, you, you were dropped at the wrong house. It could have happened, right? Uh, but I'm going to tell you, God doesn't make mistakes. We have humans that have lived their entire lives and become adults thinking they were a mistake. You were not a mistake. You were designed by the great I am. And you were designed to be special. And I'm starting to embrace it. Ooh. 
Yeah, I'm starting to walk in it. You know, I was walking up to my door the other day and I thought, man. I don't have to work at it. Right? You know, some people, when they stand before people, their knees shake. They get nervous and they quiver. And it's not that I don't have respect for the pulpit or the microphone or the opportunity to speak. But God has given me a gift of being able to share his word. And I didn't do anything to deserve it. Sister Shelley, I didn't do anything to become special. People often ask me, did you go to seminary? No. I went to the keg party. (laughs) Now, let me back that up. That's not what made me special. It kept me from being special. It locked me in a pattern of behavior that was discontented, which discounted my value. Because I was made for greater. I was created by the greatest. He's not done with me. Believe it or not, I'm still on the potter's wheel. And I still believe that I can't say anything to him about why have you created me this way. But what I can say is, oh, Lord, just do what you want to do. Have your way in my life. Oh, I'm supposed to be curved there. Designed by God. The devil's okay with you believing that God is. I know. But he's not okay with you receiving it. Oh, hold on just a second. He said, what do you mean? Well, the scripture tells us that the devils believe in God. Right? Huh? Okay. So uh, when Jesus came on the scene, uh, he uh, showed us how to do this thing called the Christian life. But it wasn't all uh, roses and palm strong, strong uh, uh, alleys to walk on where his feet didn't even touch the ground type of deal and flowing robes and roses or thorns. Right? And so when he would come upon people who were the church people of the day or the religious people of the day, uh, he basically told them that if, if they were children of God, that they would know him. Let me, let me say this right quick. They believed in God but they failed to receive him. Are you hearing me? People can believe in God, but when you start receiving Jesus as the answer, things start to change in your life. Right? And the old can't exist with the new. Jesus shares little parables about uh, old wineskins and new wineskins. And, of course, we have uh, no understanding of that because none of us drink anyway. And, uh, uh, oh, no, uh, no, none of us preserve wine in that manner anymore. How many of you have ever poured wine into a leather uh, pouch? My point exactly. But I'll tell you, if you try to pour the doctrines of holiness into the carnal mind, 
it will break. I don't know if you know, I'm talking about people that mind fleshly things. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, oh, oh. oh. Uh. <laughs> you know, it's easy to pick on sin sometimes because uh, they're, they're kind of obvious. Others uh, kind of get a pass. And, and what I mean like that, the, the fornicators will talk about the homosexual. The drunkard will talk about the drug addict, right? Uh, <laughs> the gossip will talk about the glutton. And all of them think they're right and in the image of God. And when Jesus ran across those people, they said, we're Abraham's children. And he said, no, you guys are like vipers. So he basically called them snakes to their face. Now, that's not very Christian-like. And go back to my original statement. The enemy's okay with you believing. He's not okay with you receiving. Jesus could talk about God all day long and they wouldn't have bothered him one lick. But when he started saying, I am. Oh. Got him crucified, Tom. And if you believe God and you receive God and you say God has made me special, people, even in the church, will go into that smarmy church lady attitude where isn't she special? Oh, she thinks she's special. Look at that. It's just like the vipers in Jesus' day all dressed up with no place to go. Not content with the content makes you discontent and then makes you disconnected uh, and then makes you discounted or less than rather than greater than. I, I, I'll say this, and I don't know why, but uh, uh, I, I, I've al I always struggle with the greater than, less I'm not throwing gang signs. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Greater than, less than. I, I, okay, so um, greater than, this is just a just math lesson or whatever, always points to the right. So if your political leanings, no, I'm just messing with you. Uh, no, uh, greater than always points to the right. A few years ago, what, you know, okay. oh, yeah, yeah, so... What's that? Always to the right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you look at it. We did a little thing uh, when COVID hit, uh, and it was uh, 91 is greater than 19. Because they called that uh, COVID-19. You see what I'm saying? So uh, 91 was here. The open was to the right. Always points to the right. Uh, <laughs> greater than. He has designed you for greater things. That's what Jesus said. You know, I, I think God, he, he spoke to us. He told us how to do it. Jesus came and he showed us how to do it. And then the Holy Spirit comes and enables us to do it. Because he does it with us and through us as the hope of glory. So you want to talk about created us in his image. We all need that fatherly figure. We also would do good to have an older brother. Right? That could tell you, hey, don't do that. That's going to hurt. 
Uh, I think rubber bands are probably one of the first things you learn about that hurt, uh, right? Uh, playing with coat hangers. I don't know, you know, uh, things around the house. Don't do that. That's going to hurt. Don't do that because he's already experienced it. And so what Jesus said is he, he says he was the firstborn of many brothers. Now, of course, uh, being one with God was what got him crucified. And it's what will get you persecuted as well. Because if you walk out of this building with the understanding, I am special is going to hurt you in relationships except for the only relationship that matters because God made you to be special and that includes me so I can say it and I'll say it I'm special right and some of you believe that. Some of you don't believe it as much. Uh, but God made me this way. You know, a lot of people will take what they've become and they'll say, God made me this way. Well, I'll tell you that he didn't make you anything less than an image of himself. And if you have turned that image into something else, and I'll break it down. I won't go to the uh, easy ones that everybody goes to because uh, God made you to be a special creation like him, right? And so when I say this, I I'm going to tell you, um, I was created to be special, but I liked other people's stuff. It starts early. I don't know how, you, how old you were when you started liking other people's stuff. Maybe it's a lunchbox with a cartoon character on it. You know, they're worth a lot now. The, we used to have the metal lunchboxes, and somebody would come in with a lunchbox, and maybe it had Tarzan on it. And I was like, oh, I got a paper sack. How's this fair? <laughs> and then who do you go to? You go home to mama. What's wrong? What's wrong, honey? What's wrong, honey? <laughs> honey got a lunchbox. It's got Tarzan on it. I don't have a lunchbox with Tarzan on it. <laughs> it starts early. We're discontent with the content. You know, and, and I'll tell you, I had one of my former state bishops, Brother Richard Davis, he preached, and he preached a wonderful message about taking lunch. And what happened was he was from the country, his mother was from the country, and his mother would pack him a paper sack lunch every day when he went to school. And the other kids had store-bought bread and bologna. And he was jealous of that store-bought bread and bologna. You know what he had in his bag? A cat head biscuit, a big biscuit, homemade biscuit with a big slab of country ham. And you know what he wanted? He wanted the store-bought bread and bologna because he thought what somebody else had was better than what he had. And the revelation that I'm going to tell you now is what you were created to be is what you were created to be. And you need to find out what that exactly is. And I'm going to tell you how to do it is enter into a relationship with the Word of God, which was there in the beginning. I think all of us would do well to read the first few verses of John, which says in the beginning, back in the beginning, when we were created, we were created by the Word of God and for the word of God so if you want to know what you were created to be like you need to dive in here and see what you were created to be like and I'll tell you that he's given you the ingredients for success in your life and not failure somebody say amen amen now listen uh, everybody in here believes in something even if it's nothing Because if you say you believe in nothing, that's the something that you believe in. Uh, 
And I'll tell you, you know, when it comes to God, uh, there's something called faith. Some people call it a step of faith. Some people call it a leap of faith. It's probably how far that you've got to go that makes the difference. I don't know. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, this world, they, they figure and they figure and they figure. And they said, where did all this come from? Where did I come from? How did this all happen? And then some people say, well, uh, once there was this big bang. So you're saying nothing hit nothing and made a noise. Or, or you're saying something hit something and made a noise. But I, I don't know what that something was. Is that not a leap of faith? It is. I'm telling you, I, I just believe a, a little bit differently. I believe that everything was created by someone, right? <laughs> you, you can, and, and someone created everything. That's what I believe. And then I believe that he told us about it. He showed us about it. And then he experiences it with us every day of our life to be the leader and the guider into all truth that he was created to be. And we diminish the gospel when we diminish the Holy Spirit's role in our life right now. Because if Jesus said, I've got to go, that he comes, then we better know him well. And so to discern what's going on in the Spirit is probably the most important thing because nobody comes to God unless they're drawn by that spirit. A lot of people talk about blasphemy of the Holy Ghost and the only unforgivable sin. And I, I don't want to go too deep into that. But I'll tell you, if you reject the only spirit that can lead you to Jesus Christ, there's no hope for you. Um, I have one more verse of scripture that I would like to read. And I... I oh... oh uh, nah, um, you know, first Corinthians, the first chapter, the ninth verse says good and is God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So we've been called into the fellowship of Jesus Christ and every one of us has been dealt a measure of faith. So none of us can, can have to come behind in anything good that God gives. And he says, as my children, I will give those good gifts to you. And we believe wholeheartedly in the gift of salvation. And we believe that God has given us the power over things in our lives that would distort what we're supposed to be. Uh, and so I just want to tell you that I believe that too. In Psalms, the 27th chapter, the Bible says, The Lord is my light. I'm going to ask Roger if he would come to play uh, something softly on the guitar. Psalms 27 says, The Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom? Shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. And though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. 
Have mercy also upon me and answer me. Can you say praise the Lord? Lord. Would you stand with me this morning? I I wish I had all all day. I wish I had more, more time. I believe that God created you to be special. I wish, I wish that we could say the words, I am special. What we're good at is uh, telling other people that they are. And that's a good thing. We should build one another up. But I want to tell you, you are. You were created for greater. This altar is always open. Um, and if you believed a lie about your life, maybe you were dropped into the wrong family. And they distorted what you were created to be. You can come. This altar is always open. If you've never accepted the Lord into your life as your Savior, that gift is available today. If you've never embraced the truth that God has given you everything that you need to succeed in Christian living, this altar is always open. And I would like to close with a word of prayer today. If you would, bow your heads. Heavenly Father, I love you today. I thank you for this great group of people who have heard your words. Lord, and I just ask that you continue to develop in them the understanding that you created them to be like you. Lord, and there's nothing in this world that can separate them from your love. And so I just ask that you call to their hearts and that you develop in them the strength and the power by your spirit. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen and amen. Shake somebody's hand. Tell them that you love them today. I appreciate you being here. God bless you. God bless you is my prayer.